And who should be choosing the makeup of the board long term, CEO or chairman, or how does that relationship work typically in terms of you know, where do you see it working well? And good question. I mean, where does it go wrong? I can share my experience. I mean, it's good to have to do it as a team. So the board should be choosing who else needs to be on the board as well. Mm. Ideally, it would be the chairman and the CEO who are doing it, but also the, on the board itself, understanding what their strengths and weaknesses are. Because again, the, one of the best things you can do with the board is to help them understand themselves about what strengths they bring and what weaknesses they've got so that you know who else to bring in in terms of that as well. Having open, calm, curious conversations with the rest of your board to help do that can really, really work. But Any, Anybody got an in, any internal board of directors questions? Yeah, how many are you allowed? As many as you need. There are lots. I mean, you can start to really break it down. I'm sort of approaching 15, which is quite a lot of people on the board. Um, what's interesting about the internal board of directors stuff as well, I'll just finish with this, is a lot of it can seem like approaching what you see in the media is called split personality, you know, or something approaching mental illness. It certainly can be seen as that. You think, well, I've got these voices in my head. Maybe I should squash that down. All of us experience this. All of us experience different perspectives from different parts of our mind talking at any one time. Okay? It's not something for you to worry about. This is perfectly normal that every human being has this, where different voices speak to us at different points. Okay? You're not crazy and you're not going mad if you think that some of these things are true about yourself here as well. Go, go, go.